In this problem, it states that the tractor is used to lift a 200 kilogram load B with a 30 meter long rope boom and pulley system. If the tractor travels to the right with an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared and has a velocity of 4 meters per second at the instant SA is 5 meters, determine the tension in the rope at this instant. Okay, before we solve this problem, I just want to go over the chain rule because that is the main component of this problem. So if you understand the chain rule really well, you should be able to solve this problem quite easily. So in general, let's say we want to say we want to take the derivative of this composite function and we want to take the derivative with respect to x. So the first thing we would want to do is take the derivative of the outside function, which is going to be h. So the first derivative is going to be h prime. And then we leave the inside function alone. So this is going to be g of f of x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So that's going to be this right here. So that's going to be g prime of f of x. And then since g is also a composite function, we have to take the derivative of its inside function. So that's going to be f prime of x. And technically x is a function as well. So we can multiply by the derivative of x with respect to x. So we're gonna say this is gonna be d dx of x, which is simply one. Now if it was a time derivative, then this value of x will have to be a derivative with respect to time, not with respect to x. So if you get that process in general, you should be able to solve this problem quite easily. So the goal in this problem is to find the tension in the rope. In other words, we want to find the acceleration of the body B so that we could apply Newton's second law to find that value of tension. So our goal in essence is to find the acceleration at B. So a way to do that is to actually look at the length of this rope and then take time derivatives with respect to these varying values. So SA and SB. The problem already defined the, um, the positive directions of SA and SB, so we'll use those for this problem. So this is going to be positive for SB, this is going to be positive for SA. So let's just add up the length of the rope in terms of these variables and constants. So from here to here, this is going to be H minus SB. We could say that the length of the rope is equal to H minus SB, so that's this bit right here. And then we could add up this little length around the pulley. We're gonna call that P. So we could say that's just P. That's a constant length that doesn't change with respect to SB or SA. And then we need this final length of the rope, which, we can, be, which can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. So you can see that this is going to be some right triangle right here. By the Pythagorean theorem, we could say that this length is going to be H squared plus SA squared all the way to the one half power or the square root. So this is the total length of the rope from B to A. Now that we have that, all we have to do is take the time derivatives of this equation two times to find the acceleration at A and B. So we just have to take time derivatives of this full equation twice. So L is a constant, that's just the length of the rope, it doesn't change with time, so we can say that's going to be zero. H is also a constant, that's just the height from here to here, that does not change, so that's also zero. SB is actually a variable, so we have to take the time derivative of SB, so that's going to be denoted by this dot above SB. P is also a, a constant, because this length doesn't change with time. So that's going to be zero. And then we have to take the derivative of this, which is going to be the power rule as well as the chain rule. So that's gonna be plus one half h squared plus sa squared to the negative one half power. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this is gonna be two times sa times sa dot. So you take the derivative of sa squared, so that's going to be 2sa, that's this part, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is sa, so then that'll be sa dot. So we could rewrite this a little bit nicer, so we could say that sb dot equals sa, sa dot, times h squared plus sa squared to the negative one-half power. So this is only the first derivative of this equation, which only gives us the velocity of b. So we want acceleration, so we have to take the derivative again. 
So the second derivative of b equals, so I'm gonna break up this function because we're gonna have to do the product rule twice as well as the chain rule multiple times. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be our second equation when doing the product rule. So we take the derivative of the first equation, so that's gonna be s a dot, and then we multiply by the second function, which is gonna be s a dot times h squared plus s a squared to the negative one half power. And then we add, we multiply the first function by the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of the second function is this right here. We have to do the product rule again. So we'll call this right here the first function and this right here as the second function. S a double dot times h squared plus s a squared to the negative one half power plus the first function, which is gonna be s a dot, times the derivative of the second function, so that's gonna be negative one half times h squared plus s a squared to the negative three halves power, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so that'd be two s a times s a dot. So this is where all the derivative errors are made because there's so many variables, so many different types of derivatives that you have to, you have to keep account for. So this is gonna be s a dot squared times h squared plus s a squared to the negative one half power. And then I'm gonna distribute this s a to each term. So this is going to be s a, s a double dot, h squared plus s a, squared to the negative one half power plus s a squared times s a dot squared. This is actually a negative sign. And then we multiply by h squared plus s a squared to the negative three halves power. So we can further clean up this equation by collecting some like terms. s a dot squared plus s a s a double dot, and then we multiply this by h squared plus s a squared to the negative one half power. And then we subtract this term over here, which is s a dot squared times s a squared times h squared plus s a squared to the negative three halves power. So this is not a necessary step, but I think it cleans up the equation. It gets rid of all these dots. So uh, we can define the velocity or the acceleration at B as simply the second time derivative of SB. And then we can do the same thing for SA. So the first, uh, the velocity at A is simply SA dot, and the acceleration at A is simply SA double dot. So at the end, what you get is the acceleration at B, but it's dependent on the kinematic values at A. So we have the position at A, the velocity at A, and the acceleration at A. So to find the acceleration at B, we need these three values. Luckily, in the problem statement, it gave us the acceleration, the velocity, and the position, so we are able to find the acceleration at B. So I'll plug in these values into this equation. So plugging in all these values, what we get is 4.847 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of B at this given instant of time, which is defined by these parameters. Since our goal of the problem is to actually find the tension force in the rope at that given instant, we have to look at the free body diagram of B. So that should be pretty straightforward. So this is the body B. It's gonna have a weight force because it does have mass and then there's gonna be a tension force going up. So if we call this the positive y direction, we could sum the forces in that direction. So that we call up is positive. And we can say that the tension force minus the weight force equals the mass of B times the acceleration at B. And acceleration at B at this given instant is defined right here. So we could simply say that the tension force equals the mass times the acceleration at B plus the weight of B. So all we have to do is plug in these values. And from the calculation, we get that the tension force is 2.931 kilonewtons. So that is the answer to the problem. As you can tell, the hardest part of the problem lies directly right here. 
doing the product roll, chain roll, all those different types of derivatives, as well as keeping it straight with all the different variables, is probably going to be the most difficult part. In general, just remember the concept of the chain roll and apply it where it's necessary. And through a lot of practice, you'll be able to get this down quite easily. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.